Sup guys, Koyasu Takehito is the best voice actor ever. That's the end of the video, that's it. Leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding guys, I would, I would never do that to you guys. Strawberry and passion frappuccino. Question: What makes a good voice actor? Up, up, up. Wrong. A better question: What makes someone good at anything? Is it practice? Luck? 10,000 hours? Does it not matter as long as the end product is good? Originally, I thought I was gonna come on camera here and explain to you why, oh, Koyasu Takahito is a cool voice actor. Whoa, riveting, I know. But I started thinking, what actually leads people to saying, oh, this voice actor? This is a good voice actor. Sure, I barely know anything about the industry or the art form, but I can tell that they got it. They got whatever, they got it. If people like you, then, Y you must be good. I know this is some next level thinking right here, but what actually constitutes this good? I couldn't say, but after a decent amount of research, I could say that it's not 100% based on merit. Realistically, the key to being good at anything is having a good mix of, you know, multiple factors. And that is something we will see in the admittedly ankle deep dive into the Koyasu Takahito video that... I'm making right now. If there was one word to describe the career of Koyasu, it would be, damn, he just did that. Just pretend it was one word, all right? You're gonna see later that this man just does what he pleases. But first, we gotta talk about his lore, the, the villainous backstory. Not to say he always played villains. If we look at Koyasu's first ever role, it was in this anime called Don Don Domeru Torong, which is, wow. I mean, even better than that, the English title, Wowzer. You can't make this up. <laughs> anyway, as you can tell, this is a pretty old anime. It came out in 1988, 36 years ago. And I gotta say, as a Gen Z, this is pretty much off the radar. The oldest anime I've ever seen is Berserk. What was that from like 19, what is it, 97? As for the specific role he played in this anime, I, I couldn't find it. I looked for 30 minutes, I gave up. Considering though it's his first role, it could have been like, I don't know, like a dog or I, uh, maybe like a crow. Yeah, crows are cool, yeah. All you need to know is that this anime's OP slaps. So if you like that, you know, 1980s Japanese city pop, then this is right up your alley. Now apparently Koyasu's first consistent or at least reoccurring role was for this anime for the Three Musketeers. The crazy thing about this guy's voice is that it's so distinct that it's like instantly recognizable just like that. Even him from 36 years ago, it's like, yeah, that, that's him. <laughs> On a quick side note, I can't think of that many voice actors, period, that have such a distinct voice. Though if I had to pick one, if we're talking English voice actors, I'd pick Justin Roiland just cause, you know. From that point onward, Koyasu would continue landing roles here and there and just building up his resume. Koyasu did end up landing a role in this anime called Tekkaman Blade, and this ended up being a big turning point for him. According to him, he was really struggling with voice acting at the time, and his character in the show, Shinya Aiba, really forced him to get a whole lot better. It was honestly like one of those oh shit moments. And apparently even now, this is a role that Koyasu looks back on and says that he improved tremendously from, which is relatable as long as you didn't peak in high school like I did. Now, onto a related note, we have to talk about company culture in Asia. Many of you may be somewhat familiar with the practices of Asian-based talent agencies. Um, uh, long story short, it's kinda draconic compared to the West. For example, as much as people love K-pop, some of the things that those talents are forced to do behind the scenes is a little, a little disturbing. We just also had the whole fiasco with Niji Sanji where they terminated one of their VTubers, one of their talents, and the whole thing turned into a PR disaster so big that it got out of the VTuber sphere, which almost never happens. Like it actually got, it got so big that even like what, Moist Critical and Asmongold were talking about it. They don't want you to work for them. They want to own you. I do literally mean own you. They own the IP of that character. And so your existence online is foundationally built off of that one character and they own and control that. They own the IP. And I swear to God, every every week there's something new coming out with the Niji Sanji thing. Like even even just yesterday, I was watching a video where they leaked like the um, the contract for the libraries, and it's just <laughs> it just keeps getting worse. The big problem people have with these companies is that they have way too much control over 
the talent. It's really to maintain that image, and this is especially true in Japan. Japan is a nation that relies heavily on tradition, seniority, and loyalty. In college, I actually got the chance to talk to a career recruiter that used to work in Japan, and I asked her, if you graduate from college, high school, and then you want to just travel, like, can you... Can you do that? And she told me, no, if you actually don't get a job immediately out of college and like get into this whole like shushu kakatsudo, you will be seen as a social deviant. Companies will look at you on your resume and be like, oh, what's what's this? You didn't go to a job, which is, which is not good. The number one thing is making yourself seem like a reliable employee as soon as possible. And the best way of doing that is by falling in line and doing what everyone else is doing. Basically not creating a scene. There's this one saying in Japanese where it goes, deteiru kugi ga utareru. The nail that sticks out gets hammered in, you know? What's this? You want to take a gap year out of high school and travel for a year? Uh, yeah, we'll... We'll see about that. Additionally, in Japan, trades that might traditionally be more freelance in the West suddenly become more company-centric. Voice acting in Japan is one of those jobs that relies entirely around agencies to match the talents up with the correct job. For some reason, America's and Japan's culture around voice acting is so vastly different. It's like, it's, it's hilarious. In Japan, voice actors, or seiyuu, are treated a lot like pop stars because a lot of them are active in music and they can get very, very popular for some reason. That's weird. But one thing we know for sure for both countries is that it's just generally difficult to become a voice actor. Like, I think the only way to become a voice actor in Japan is by going to a specific school for voice acting, like a senmon gakko it's called. Even with the diploma, you have incredibly limited job opportunity. Hi everybody, voice actors in Japan live off the, um, the dragon warrior diet as I like to call it from, you know, Kung Fu Panda. A grain of rice and the energy of the universe for like a month. Even if you land a position at a voice acting agency, you'll still have to most likely work other part-time jobs at the same time to keep yourself afloat. If you want to know more about how Japanese voice actors are paid, consider watching this one video I made, but at the same time, maybe don't watch it because it's kind of a shit video, but just know that it's not much. The payment structure is similar to rankings in the, you know, the hit classic game, League of Legends. Everybody loves that game. That and then everybody starts from the bronze rank. It's great. This is where Koyasu separates himself from the rest. In the late 1990s, a decade after he started his career, Koyasu decided he had enough. Are you saying that he started his own voice acting company? No, um, he said it's time to bring out the boys. Oh, what's that, the Spongebob? Huh? Oh, James Corden's being an asshole? Oh. What's going on? I Relax, mean- Relax, Morty. Don't, don't worry about it. Let's just, just see where this goes. Wabe cr- Okay, hold up. This, this is some kind of German. Let me- If you, if you look at the Japanese film, that says Weiss Kreutz. Weiss Kreutz is a media franchise that Kuyasu somehow willed into existence out of nowhere. It consisted of two animes, one manga, one light novel, and the best of all, some spicy drama discs for those late nights. <laughs> yeah, boy. Essentially, he teamed up with some voiceover friends, he grabbed an artist, and together they just made some yaoi. As you do, you know, you just, this naturally happens. This project was the first thing that Koisi did after he left the small agency he was working for called Production Bao Bao. Seri seriously, who's making these names? As far as information goes on the internet, I could not find why he did this. Nevertheless, this was Koyasu's first big step in his career as a solo voice actor. I mean, come on, if you could just make a boys love franchise at the snap of your finger, why, who wouldn't, who wouldn't do it? The project wasn't exactly a huge success, but it acted as a springboard into some other projects that he did definitely do. For example, in the years 2000 to 2001, Koyasu became active in making music on under the name Zazel. And surprisingly, he's not a bad singer, actually. Personally, I was not expecting something like this from the king of villains himself, but the best way I can describe this two-year period is like, it's just an emo phase, honestly. <laughs> like, look at this one song title. It's called Kami wa taisetsu na mono wo kizutsukeru. In English, God will hurt the things you hold close. Like, like, god damn. Bring out the black eyeliner. Oh, there's a storm. There's a storm inside of my soul. And around that same time, Koyasu would go on to launch his own voice acting talent agency. Finally. Yep, there it is. Tease Factory, the ultimate power move. The funny thing is that this new talent agency would only ever house three members. Another fellow voice actor named Michiru Sato, Koyasu himself, and then his own son, Kouki Koyasu. <laughs> and it's the three of them, and it has been just the three of them for the past 23 years even now. So, 
under his own self-made agency, Koyasu would continue auditioning for roles until he became the villainous icon that he is known as today. I think about this every day. I think about this all night long. Back to the main point, Koyasu is not a successful and good voice actor, not just because he's good at making the voices and doing the evil guy thing. Clearly, this man has a tendency for leading people. Oh shit, where'd, where'd my audacity go? What the heck? Whether it be his debut into making yaoi anime, or his venture into his emo band phase, it's not often you hear of a voice actor from Japan just running off and making his own agency, where it's just another guy and then his own son, and then <laughs> that's it. What the hell? <laughs> Honestly, just a little bit stunlocked that he just did that. Based off of the accounts of many different VAs from Japan, the industry is very difficult to break into. You can get your certifications from VA school, you can get into a big talent agency, and there's still no guarantee that you'll get a job. The fact that Koyasu was able to take such a large risk and create his own agency out of thin air was really impressive. This is where I insert my opinion. Obviously, he's incredibly talented to do such a thing, but I think there's a great deal of luck that had to deal with it as well. I'm certain not everyone has the ability to just up and create a whole ass company on their own. I mean, if you tried the same thing around this time, it's questionable if it would have worked, especially with how saturated the industry is now. You know, I don't know. You even got AI technology like right on the horizon waiting to like just take those jobs away. Though all that is just my opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. By saying all this, I'm not trying to take away from Koyasu's raw skill. I think we all know that this guy deserves the position he has based off of his talent. I mean, hell, it almost seems like he just keeps getting better. He just... Oh wow, like, it's almost like that's how like improvement works. You get better over time, wow. This guy voiced characters in what? The original Evangelion, Yu-Gi-Oh, Gintama... That was those these series like happened a while ago. The fact that he's still going like this hard is it's crazy. It's it's kind of impressive. And it's almost like each new performance is like a new peak for him. Yeah, <laughs> I am a Gen Z anime fan, and personally, I love anime that came from like the 2010s to now. Everything in that span is like what I watch. And obviously that includes stuff like Jujutsu Kaisen. And man, you know, Toji Fushiguro, this is a character, this is a role where he absolutely killed it. He gave a performance fitting of an assassin that was bloodthirsty, but not too bloodthirsty. It was just right. And honestly, there's a little bit too much thirst in the Jujutsu Kaisen fandom, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, there's also the classic Dio Brando, one of the most quoted and memed anime characters of all time. Koyasu's performance of Dio Brando is just, it's nothing short of legendary. The character is a top level threat and he's got that top level threat type voice. And then he's also mad zesty, which is like the perfect, the perfect Jojo villain. Apart from the straight villain roles, you start to notice that Koyasu also picks up a lot of roles where it's just like a straight psychotic character. Just, just, just straight crazy. It really starts to add up when you look back and you realize he played characters like what, the um, Excalibur? He was Excalibur from Soul Eater. What? Will you not get king? I'm looking for him. I'm going to California. I didn't even realize that until I went back and started researching for this video. Isekai Oji san. All these characters that are just wacky and just weird. My personal absolute favorite performance of his is the sister from Arakawa Under the Bridge. Guys, this anime is a sleeper hit, absolutely. Koyasu plays this character where it's like if you took like Metal Gear Snake and then crossed it with a nun, it's incredible. Oi. <laughs> Alright guys, here's my tip for you. Whenever you hear a voice in an anime and you recognize that voice, go ahead and look up their name in my anime list and take out your notes app, write them down with like a reference name, reference character, and there you go. We need to, we need to start normalizing knowledge about Seiyu so I can keep doing this series. <laughs> so I can, you know, I, I can keep making these videos. Because I don't know about you, um, 12 views is not enough. I need more. Anyway, thanks for watching this far. I appreciate you. Um, leave your belongings down in the comments. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you later.